Across this great nation, there is a culture of people who carry on a heritage. They have an intangible quality that can't be described, but it comes from deep within their hearts. They share an appreciation for the greatest things that come from Mother Earth. They watch over, understand, and care for the vast wilds of this great country. Fishing, hunting, and trapping are the foundations that Canada was built on. For over two centuries, we have taken to the woods and water to pursue wild game. Today, it's about conservation, preservation, and wildlife management. Whether you are a man or woman, fish or hunt, you should support sound wildlife management and proudly say, I am an angler and hunter. The Ontario Federation of Anglers and Hunters proudly presents Angler and Hunter Television. Brought to you by Canadian Tire, a proud partner of Angler and Hunter Television. Mercury Marine and Lund Boats. Yamaha ATVs. Browning Firearms. Rapala. Winchester Ammunition. Bushnell. Excalibur Crossbows and Yukon Gear. Canada is a pretty special place. And as Canadians, we should appreciate all that it has to offer. From coast to coast, each province has a uniqueness with its people, landscapes, and especially hunting and fishing opportunities. Being from Ontario, I tend to look at my home as the center of my universe. But I do realize that if I want to expand my horizons pursuing fish and game that are not available here, then I'm going to have to do some traveling. We're out for a rip. And today, we're heading west and chasing one of the oldest migratory bird species on the planet, the Sandhill Crane. So we just landed in Regina, in the wonderful province of Saskatchewan, and we're driving north to a destination where we're going to be hunting sandhill cranes. Now, uh, to most people that are going to be watching this show, they're going to sort of say, sandhill cranes, why well, you can hunt sandhill cranes? But, you know, there are populations expanding, and even into Ontario, so one day we could have a sandhill crane season in Ontario, and that's kind of what I'm coming out here for, is to to expose sandhill crane hunting and uh, show people what it's all about and hopefully uh, get to sample some because I hear they're delicious eating birds. They call them ribeye of the sky. I'll be joined by good friends and migratory yeah. bird experts, Dr. Scott Petrie of Delta Waterfowl and Pat Kehoe of Ducks Unlimited Canada in the beautiful prairie province of Saskatchewan. You know, there's a couple things Saskatchewan is famous for, and that's its giant white-tailed deer and being flat. People say you can see one side of the province to the other, but now that we're here driving in it, I look around and I say, where would a deer hide? Why is the white-tailed population thriving here? And look at the territory. It's not flat. I mean, there's hills, valleys, rivers, lakes. Uh, it's quite nice. Beautiful place. Our journey to Saskatchewan took us from Regina to Nokomis. Now in my travels I've encountered the odd crane in parts of Ontario and even northern Quebec. But I've never seen anything like this. The migration had started and literally thousands of birds were flocking to the grain fields every day. The best way to locate cranes over the vast fields is to drive from farm to farm checking for flocks. So we checked out one area, there's a lot of snow geese and, and a bunch of sandhill cranes. It's a potential hunt for the morning. We're going to go check out another field right now where there was a lot of sandhill cranes the last two days. The sun's getting low, but generally the, the sandhills, especially on a night like this when it's not cloudy, it's uh, a bit of wind blowing, but it's a, a clear night won't really fly until the sun touches the horizon. 
once that happens, the birds will start moving heavily back to the roost site. So what we're going to do tonight, we're just out looking for cranes for tomorrow morning's hunt. We're on a tight timeline to get this done because we've got to go about 15 miles here and look at a field and under, understand what the cranes are doing in that field. But I think we'll be, uh, we'll be okay. We'll get, get our, our field scouted, uh, then we'll secure permission later in the evening. But if you, if you really watch those birds and try and understand what they're doing, you could have a pretty high success rate. This portion of Angler and Hunter Television brought to you by Yamaha ATVs. Sandhill cranes lift from their roosting sites early each morning and travel to their feeding sites for the rest of the day. The trick is to be in between those two sites and get traveling birds. Okay, Pat, so we're going to be hunting cranes and snows, maybe some big mallards. Yep. Uh, speckle bellies, yep. basically large sized birds. So we brought along BB. What's, uh, what do you suggest? BBs, number ones, maybe twos? At yeah, the I like I like BBs the best. Three inch BBs is what I normally shoot on the bigger birds. Okay, so we're going to load up with the blind side BBs. Okay. And then we're also going to be puddle jumping some of the potholes and the potholes have all sorts of birds in them. There's there's going to be godwall, uh, I've, we've seen some pintails, mallards, it's a it's a large variety of birds but for the most part you want to shoot teal. This time of year teal are in the best condition, they're delicious, I mean they're just, just the best bird to shoot right now. Right, so we've got uh, a flat of uh, the same ammunition basically but it's in a number five shot. I guess you could probably get away with a three. I go four or five on, on teal, generally. Right. So that's basically it, but uh, we'll put the fives away, we'll grab a few of these boxes of BBs and uh, find ourselves a hay bale. All right, let's go. Setting up in a field with some round right, bales is all really one needs to do. See those two bales that are relatively close together here? The best way to work a field like this is to spread out and be ready to move if you need to. Pat and I took yeah. one side of the field and Scott took cover on the other. Yeah, the eastern population of Sandhill Cranes or actually sandhill cranes overall in North America have, have substantially increased in population in the last uh, 20, 30 years and, and uh, really came back from the brink of almost extinction, which is a wonderful thing. And uh, uh, they're now hunted in I think seven or eight states and a couple provinces. And so they definitely are a game bird. So it's not an, ethic, not an ethical issue. It's just a matter of, of opening season nice. strategically when their populations can, can sustain a harvest within individual states and provinces. Nice. So Shoot. there has been some talk about uh, opening a, province, or a, a season in Ontario. And hopefully it'll make people realize that, yes, we do have a, a sizable numbers. population in Good Ontario. Down. And, and uh, hopefully it'll make people eager for the, the possibility of a, a crane yeah. season in Ontario in the future. And I could see uh, certainly um, uh, Alberta getting a season pretty soon as well because they've got lots of cranes. Massive flocks of sandhill cranes have a very unique sound when they lift off. There's nothing like it anywhere. And by putting out a few decoys, you can bring them in a little closer. So the cranes are roosting down to the uh, south of us over here on, on some ponds. We've got snow geese out front. The birds have been feeding in a field back here to the west. So again, the idea is to get between the birds and the roost, particularly with cranes, and uh, shoot them as they're, as they're coming over to feed. Uh, this is a big, uh, this area up here is a number of uh, basins, uh, Ducks Unlimited projects out through the, through the pasture here. Yeah, you can hear the cranes, eh? Yeah. Speaking of Ducks Unlimited, I didn't even realize you guys had your logo on Winchester Sandwich. There you go, yeah. <laughs> Another partnership that we have. Yeah, when, oh, listen to that. When you get up on these hills, yeah. there, look at over here. That's pretty typical. They're getting ready to move out to the field so they get up off the water. You can see for miles, and I mean, the skies are full of birds. Absolutely. I mean, over there, it's about a mile and a half away. There's a flock of 8,000 snow geese or so just milling around a pond. They're getting ready to make their move to feed for the morning. There's another group down here by that windmill, uh, and that's two or three miles away that we can see them. And the sound travels well out here. You can hear those birds a long way away. There's cranes right there. There are cranes right there. Maybe we should crouch yeah, down and get ready, eh? I'm come. Okay. Got them both hitting the ground. Awesome work, guys. Beautiful. As the sun rises, the birds get more active and fly over the areas we scouted the night before. 
Nice crane. They are a beautiful bird, eh? Beautiful adult. So this is a, uh, oh, look at that. Mallard just threw uh, over his shoulder. That's this a, is a uh, lesser? This is a lesser. Yeah, a shorter bill and the lessers have brown on them. Hopefully we'll get a greater, we can talk about that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, nice bird. The beak is smaller on, on a lesser. Both have this uh, red patch over the, over the eyes. Uh, red skin there, it comes bright red when the, the birds are, are mating and alive. The, the lessers have this brownish feathering in here. Right. And what that actually is, is, is rust stains. They pick up moss and rub it on their feathers. So uh, it's, a, it's a pretty cool thing. Have you ever had a chance to eat them? No, well, we're going to... They're so delicious, yeah. They, they, some, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, look at this. Nice. Yeah, so Saskatchewan, Manitoba have them. You were talking about uh, they leave fairly early. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, they're early migrants, yeah, on that. Now, is there any other provinces that do have, a, a, you know, a, a sandhill population? Yeah, um, Alberta has a sandhill population. There's been uh, well, a, attempts know, I, to open a season. Yeah, and I heard there's a bit of... Uh, resistance because uh, sort of the non-hunter any hunting groups are saying uh, hunters will incidentally shoot whooping cranes. Yes. But I mean if that was true there wouldn't be seasons in Manitoba, Saskatchewan. Right, because I mean there's a lot of whooping cranes in this general area of Saskatchewan every year I, I see them usually mixed in with sandhills but they're very easy to tell apart. Uh, whooping cranes are a big white bird with black wing tips. Um, there's no excuse for a hunter mistaken not to say that wouldn't wouldn't happen, but uh, it's, it's very rare in ar areas where sandal cranes are, are being shot, whether it's Texas or I mean, Canada, there, there are whooping cranes in those populations. So it's something that, that has happened for years and it's never really been a population concern to whooping cranes. Right. And you know what, I mean, most people don't understand how responsible hunters are. I mean, when we take our hunter safety courses, we gotta learn to, how to identify all the birds. I mean, like when you're out hunting, you're only allowed one black duck in some areas. Yeah. You know, it's, people aren't saying, oh, they're going to incidentally shoot all the black ducks. Right. You know, we know what we're doing for the most part. And, um, you know, I don't think there's any more responsible person out in the, in the, the wilds of Canada than hunters. Or knowledgeable about wildlife. And, yeah. and uh, I mean, like whooping cranes and sandhills are way different than, than mallards and black ducks. Mallards and black ducks at low light could be easily mistaken, but as you say, uh, regulations are such that they're restrictive on black ducks and it's not a problem. It's not a population yeah. problem. There's some cranes right there. They might go for Scott. There's got birds coming here now. Got him. Oh, Scott. Scott got a couple of them. He connected on a nice one there, yeah. They are a big bird in the sky. They. The d distance is harder to judge, I find, than, than ducks. It is, and especially out here on the prairies, you've got no real reference points, I mean, things are wide open. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, these cranes are, are look a lot uh, a lot closer than they are sometimes because they are a big bird. But the other thing with the, the two sizes, the graders and the lessers, you've got to sort of pay attention to which which bird you, you're actually shooting at. Right. Mixed Pro bag right here. Cranes with geese behind them. You're looking at this small group? Yeah, that's too wide. Huh? No, I'm not going to shoot that. <laughs> I was going to say. This portion of Angler and Hunter Television brought to you by Minn Kota and Humminbird. Any avid waterfowler or wing shooter would love this trip. Mornings are spent scouting fields, and then after a lunch, you head out for a midday drive to jump potholes for teal and various puddle ducks. And with a dog, it's really easy to retrieve any ducks you knock down. Here, here, here. Since Bruiser started retrieving ducks, he is having the most fun. Uh, he loves playing find the bird. He sits on the console in the truck just waiting for us to go and uh, get some ducks. And when those guys pull the trigger, he is ready to go get the bird for them. Get it, Brian. Here he is, right behind us. He just came right out of the truck. Bruiser, 
This is the uh, world's greatest retriever coming. Bring a bird. Bring a bird. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy, buddy. Don't get the other bird. Come on, get the other bird. Bruiser. Bruiser. Bruiser, get the other bird. Go get the other bird. He just learned this two weeks ago. Oh. Good boy, Bruiser. Bruiser, Bruiser, here, here, here. Here. Come here, Bruiser. Look alive, Bruiser. Good boy, buddy. Come on, come on. Bring the bird, bring the bird. So some nice blue wings for the barbecue. We'll pluck those and grill them. Good dog. <laughs> dog works well, huh? <laughs> All right, let's move on and see what else we can find. The Hunting Edge is brought to you by Winchester Ammunition. To get the edge over the cranes, I use the Browning A5 12 gauge shotgun loaded with Winchester's blindside ammunition in 3 inch, number 2, and BB shot. Yukon Gear Shadow Grass Blades camo pattern kept me concealed and we spotted birds on the horizon and in the fields with a set of Bushnell binoculars. A pair of Camilla's game shears made processing the birds quick and effortless. This portion of Angler and Hunter Television brought to you by Canadian Tire. Canada is a vast and varied land and no one understands that better than anglers and hunters. And no one understands anglers and hunters better than Canadian Tire. With close to 500 stores coast to coast and specialized pro shops that carry an enhanced assortment of top brand names, you can be sure to find everything you need for your next fishing or hunting trip. Calling in waterfowl and getting them to lock up for a landing can be hard to do. Pressured birds can be wary and it often takes a realistic decoy spread to get them to commit. Now if you hunt grain or grass fields, then a spread of hardcore full body decoys are ideal. If, however, you're hunting over water, then it's important to get decoys that have a sturdy keel for natural motion and have realistic patterns, like this set of hardcore mallards that feature a tangle-free clip-and-go design for easy deployment and retrieval. Whether you're an experienced hunter or just getting started, Canadian Tire has the quality brands you expect and the cool new products you need. To see more, check out your local Canadian Tire store or go online to canadiantire.ca slash proshop. For the most part, this trip was to experience the unique opportunity to nice. hunt sandhill cranes. That's the beauty of hunting the prairies. But they are renowned as ribeye of the sky. Okay. And Pat Kehoe has there a barbecue goes, recipe huh? that will have you swear right you're right eating right grade A steak. Okay, so we're going to make uh, stuffed crane breasts. We've shot a few cranes this morning. We breasted them out, taken the breast fillets. I'm going to cut a pocket in those. Dice up bell peppers, mushrooms, onion, saute them in bacon, and then uh, coat the breast in olive oil and uh, Montreal steak spice, and we're going to cook it on a charcoal grill. So that's our barbecued uh, stuffed crane breasts. I've taken about uh, six strips of bacon, diced them, then I'm going to add the onions and uh, mushrooms and let that cook in there. So we're doing this over medium heat right now. Let that cook for a little while while I dice the, uh, the peppers up. It's a good way to, to do crane breasts or even big Canada goose breasts. So I want that stuff so it's about a half inch square or centimeter square, I guess, for the metrics in the crowd. Okay, so that's the stuffing mixture. Just turn the heat up a little bit. Stir it. I'm going to add some, some beer, any kind of beer will do and that'll just allow it to, to sort of boil and cook down. So we're going to run that over a little higher, higher heat for about uh, 10 minutes. Okay, so we're going to take a crane breast. It's been skinned and cleaned. Take the, the filleting knife, insert it in the wide end of the, the, uh, the breast fillet, and you're just cutting a pocket without coming out the side. So that's, that's where you're going to put the stuffing mix, right in the pocket. Once your breasts are cut, then I add some, just some Montreal steak spice. You don't want them totally crusted in Montreal steak spice, but just enough to, enough to cover them. Okay, so our uh, stuffing mixture is uh, simmering nicely. I'm going to 
season it a bit with some Worcester sauce and then some steak sauce and you can use any any of your favorite kind of steak sauces there's, there's no nothing really special you want to put probably about a quarter cup of steak sauce in that mixture just enough to flavor it give it uh, give it an even coating stir that up and again now we'll let this cook for another five or ten minutes to to blend those flavors together. And if it's starting to dry out a bit, add a little more beer. It's uh, perfect. Okay, so our birds have been on for about 20 minutes. They're looking very good. Uh, they'll be medium rare. The uh, if you're doing this in an oven, I'd say you want probably 30 to 40 minutes, depending on how well done you like your meat. So most game, in my opinion, should be done medium rare. 15 minutes on a, on a charcoal grill like this is, is plenty. We'll let them rest for about 10 minutes before we eat them. Stack these, press the stuff press up and a duck at each end, and we've got a heck of a nice platter that we harvested this morning. There we go. Looking pretty good. Mm. That, without a doubt, was one of the most exciting experiences of my life. If I grew up in Saskatchewan and I was able to do all this, I probably wouldn't have graduated high school. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> I would have just been out hunting all the time. It's good to expand your horizons. And a good place to start doing that is definitely Saskatchewan. It's hunting paradise and smack dab in the center of Canada. So it's easy for anyone to come and visit from coast to coast. Closed captioning of Angler and Hunter Television is brought to you by Ontario Out of Doors Magazine. Angler and Hunter Television has been brought to you by Canadian Tire, Mercury Marine and Lund Boats, Yamaha ATVs, Browning Firearms, Rapala, Winchester Ammunition, Bushnell, Excalibur Crossbows, and Yukon Gear. For more information on the products used in this episode of Angler and Hunter Television, visit AHTV.com. Be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Remember, conserve and protect our great outdoors.